I found a tick on my dog. Okay, no problem. Come in, search the dog. There's no tick. You go to the owner. Tell me exactly where this tick is. And then you're like, ma'am, that's a nipple. I beg your pardon. All right. In three, two, one. Hey, Bessie, it's your favorite caffeinated, medicated, and never hydrated Bessie. It's your favorite nurse, Nurse John. And welcome back to your favorite podcast. I beg your pardon. I miss you guys so much. How's everybody doing? I hope you are doing well wherever you're listening right now in your car, at work, at home, doing groceries, doing laundries, wherever you are. I just want to say Thank you for listening, Bessie, and I hope life is going good. And if it's not, remember what I always tell you. There's always another day to restart and do it again as long as you don't give up on yourself. Right? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? Well, Bestie, we are back again for another week, another juicy and interesting story from another guest in this podcast. But before we continue, if you're listening right now, do me a quick favor and make sure that you download this episode and all other episodes that you haven't listened to because you need to keep up, Bestie. This is your therapy, right? Make sure that you download this episode and you download it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Make sure that you follow us and turn on notifications so that you receive a daily or weekly notification when there's a new episode that comes out. And also, don't forget to give us a five star on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And Bessie, if you are ever wondering what keeps me up at night, my anxiety. <laughs> Not just my anxiety, but what helps me stay up at night during my shifts in the hospital, it's rice fuel baby r-y-s-e-f-u-e-l this is a caffeinated drink there's only 200 milligrams of caffeine but yes this is one of my favorite caffeine drink it's r-y-s-e-f-u-e-l and you can find one nearest you if you just type in google rice fuel locator and you will find one close to you well we're gonna crack one open with my guest right now let's crack it right here like asmr <gasps> That was insane. That is so cool. Oh well, cheers. How did I taste? That's nice. Oh, what do you have? Twisted lemon? Twisted twisted lime. Twisted lime. I had a cool aid. Mm. Right. Well, cheers to you, Bessie. So again, if you ever want one rice fuel, just find one nearest you. We have it right here. And also, if you haven't checked out my merch store, you can always visit www.nursejohn.com and you can get your merch. Actually, one of my cup right now that I'm holding, it's We'll Continue to Modern Hydration Cup. You can find it on my website, www.nursejohn.com. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, I know you've been waiting to know who is my guest for today. Well, she came from healthcare, but it's not human. It's animals cute little animals our best friends the ones that takes care of us when we get home the ones that relieves our stress and anxiety when we get home from our stressful job they're the one who gives care and tells us what to do right when it comes to our pets i brought you guys someone from the veterinary technician world nadia Hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good. Good. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to just, you know, talk about what it is I do. Exactly, because you know what? There's a lot of veterinary technician who's been following me mm -hmm. and they've been telling me, John, I'm not taking care of human beings, but listen, <laughs> it's the same, same thing. Thing. It's the same thing. And I don't know what makes it the same or mm -hmm. different because I have never been a veterinary technician. So can you please, first of all, introduce yourself and give us a little bit more information about you? Yeah. So I'm Nadia. Hello. So I have always been connected with animals way more than I've been with people. I just have this special bond with animals. Uh, my mother will say 
you've always were meant to work with animals. I wanted to work in conservation. This was my goal. I wanted to, you know, go to university, right. be involved in saving the animals. And then I went to university and me and her were not friends. And then when I was struggling through university, trying to figure out, OK, well, if this is not going to work for me, what's going to work for me? I had pets my whole life. Go to the veterinarian um, with our dog. I made my mom bring my hamster to the veterinarian because I was that, like, I'm doing really cute. I'm doing everything for this little thing. There was always, you know, the people behind the scene. I just never questioned right. what they were doing, who they were, what their role was. Did someone or inspired you to become a veterinary technician mm. or was it just because you love animals so much that you wanted to do this? For me, it was a passion for science. Right. My dislike of humans. Uh, but no offense. <laughs> just just like I love that. I love Listen, <laughs> she is allowed to not like humans. <laughs> And honestly, there's so many vet techs who's telling uh, me like... We are not people people. Exactly. Even in the nursing <laughs> profession, there are a lot of us who wants to work in the clinics or, you mm -hmm. know, like at home because they don't want to deal with humans. And that's completely yes. fine. Yes. Valid. That, period. And I keep telling people, listen, being a nurse doesn't mean you have to be completely extroverted yeah. or... In any healthcare profession, like mm -hmm. vet tech, there's a lot of jobs for us that you don't require to interact mm -hmm. with human beings. Yeah. If you don't want that or animals mm -hmm. or anything like that. So I'm a complete introvert. And I originally went into the field thinking like, oh, I won't have to deal with people. Mm -hmm. It's a lie. Just so everyone knows. Well, there you go. <laughs> Even though she hates people, <laughs> she still have to deal with them. Yeah. So it's a misconception. If you're going to go into the industry being like, I don't want to be a human doctor, human nurse, because I'm yeah. not a people person, you still have to deal with people. So mm -hmm. I guess vet techs are basically the nursing profession. Exactly. In the animal world. Yeah. I know in other parts of the world, right. I think in the UK, they're referred to as veterinary nurses. I know that in uh, the United States and Canada, at least, we're referred mm -hmm. to as veterinary technicians. Technician. I know that there's a big thing with us calling ourselves nurses, with right. human nurses. Mm -hmm. Would you rather be called a veterinary technician or a mm. veterinary nurse? So uh, I think it's complicated. I think for the general public, for our our the owners of these pets, if we were to call ourselves veterinary nurses, mm -hmm. I think they'd have a better understanding of what it is that we do. Right. Because then for me, as an outsider of your profession, mm -hmm. if you tell me you're a veterinary technician, I was like, okay, so they do x-ray, they do yeah. um, something technical. Mm -hmm. But then if you guys are handling pets and being there with the pets for I don't know how long, maybe the same thing as nurses, almost like 24-7, mm -hmm. yeah. you guys should be called nurses. Yeah, so I think it's twofold. We do a lot of the same things that nurses do. Our career is very technical. Mm -hmm. And so being called a technician is very appropriate. Right, because you're not just probably nursing the animal, you're also yeah. nursing the pair. The like paw rinse? Like, uh, that's yeah. really cute. But yes, you nurse them yeah. because they're probably super anxious, yes. super agitated, super yeah. angry, super confused. Mm -hmm. Because I have been in that position. Actually, just last, um, last two months, December, my dog, during Christmas season... <laughs> season i hosted friends miss mm -hmm. and then so i made some charcuterie board and food and whatnot and my dog is a grabber he waits for the chance that no one is looking and he would climb and he would jump anywhere to grab the food and so my wife saw that he grabbed the food the charcuterie um stick oh my god and then so i was like okay well that's it I know he's not going to poop it. I know he's not. It's not going to come out anywhere. It's yeah. going to be stuck somewhere. Yeah. And then so my heart was pounding. But then I was like, we decided, that, okay, we're just going to monitor. Maybe a miracle is going to happen and that toothpick is going to go away. Mm -hmm. And it's we have to literally search his poo every single yeah. time. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, at some point, he stopped pooping for like four days. Yeah. Big sign. And, Big red uh, flag. I know. So we're just like, okay, we were using our nursing experience. Yes. We're kind of like, okay, if you're not pooping for four days, there's something that's blocking your intestine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're like, you know what? Let's call our emergency hospital for dogs. And then they're like, yeah, you have to go to the hospital because that looks like an emergency mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Surgery. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, surgery? Yeah. My six year old? I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, please, My no. Baby. I know. And the funny thing is, we were leaving for New York that time mm. too. So we were on the way the to stress. New York. <laughs> Girl, we had to drop him at like 6 a.m. in the morning drive to new york and oh while gosh. we were like driving to new york mm-hmm. there was a snowstorm oh and we're like talking to the um the, the doctor mm-hmm. and she's like yeah unfortunately we have to do the surgery or we can do endoscopy mm-hmm. if we can get it off from endoscopy then you don't have to do the surgery yeah. and it's gonna cost you eight thousand <laughs> eight thousand dollars <laughs> And then so we were praying on the way. We're like, please, 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 please get it out from endoscopy. And like, for some reason, miracle happened oh, and wow. they were able to take it out from endoscopy. <gasps> That's amazing. And he didn't have to go to surgery. That's great. And sorry, I just have to give you a little story because yeah. I was in such a stressful time mm-hmm. and I was really panicking. And, you know, as a nurse who have experienced many situations with like, patients who's yeah. being rude who's like mm. who won't calm down i was in that position yeah. and it was so hard not to, to keep yeah. react to, emotionally right yeah. to keep your calm mm-hmm. because they're like what do you mean you have to open him up like yeah. what do you mean now yeah and like yeah and there's a chance that he might not serve i was like <laughs> I was like, please, not now. <laughs> and we were just like, should we pull back? Mm. Should we pull back from this, like, you know, vacation and just mm-hmm. like wait for it? So it was really hard. So, anyways, going back to the whole to your explanation. So yeah, yeah. it's it's hard. It's really yeah. hard to deal with those kind of situation. But yeah, you guys deal with your patient mm-hmm. and the, the parents and the people. Yeah. So we we have like two patients. Mm. so we have our patients which are are obviously our primary concern the animals right Right. and then we have our owners which we are having to be their emotional support we're having to explain things to them so Mm -hmm. that they can understand you know and make them feel um at ease if something's going wrong we're there to support them and hold their hand through those last moments so, you know, there is a big emotional um, aspect to our job, which right. I'm not, you know, I'm not a nurse. I don't know how it is for you guys where we have two emotional baggages. We have right. our emotional concern for our patient and then we have our emotional concern for the owners. The owners. Mm-hmm. But then you just said something. I'm not a nurse, but I absolutely firmly believe that you guys are <laughs> nurses because of what you do yeah. and what you have to deal with mm-hmm. i feel like you know that's a lot of nursing yeah it is a lot of nursing so if we were to talk about you know what i do which a lot of people don't mm-hmm. necessarily know what the technicians do right i work in a small animal practice so mm-hmm. this means i work uh, strictly with cats and dogs um i don't do uh, small animals uh, rodents no, Rabbits, nothing like that. Nothing like that. No birds, no so exotics. Just, just dogs and cats. Dogs and cats exclusively. Um, so a part of my role is nursing. So we have patients. We have to administer medications. We install uh, IV catheters. Uh, we manage their Ooh. fluids. I have so um, much question in my head. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. Um, you know, we, we administer medications. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are pharmacy techs. So we prep prescriptions. Uh, we, you know, calculate drugs for all our patients. Um, uh, I'm an anesthetic technician. I monitor and uh, run anesthesia during surgeries. Oh my god! Uh, I'm doing pre-op, post-op, um, everything. <laughs> everything. You're so, a whole hospital. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, I intubate our patients. <gasps> I transfer them to surgery. I prep them for surgery. I am their post-op uh, to ensure that they're waking up uh, well and making sure you know that there's no complications post-surgery. Um, we are uh, radiograph technicians, so we take X-rays. Um, <laughs> oh my god yeah. the amount of things that you guys do i yeah. mean like more than nurses and like mm-hmm. nurses for humans yeah so we do everything wow. we are one person who does everything we do have specialists so okay. as technicians we can specialize oh my god this is so interesting to know mm-hmm. i mean like again i kind of like see the similarities of it to the yeah i guess to the healthcare of 
the mm-hmm. human world. Yeah. But wow, mm-hmm. the jobs that you guys do yeah. for we do everything. The pay that <laughs> for the pay that you guys are probably getting. Ooh. I know. That's a that's a <laughs> that's another topic that's another we're gonna topic. be discussing yeah. in a bit. But yes, wow. So that's mm-hmm. that's really a lot of job. Yeah. And did you guys go into training to to know all of those? Or yep. is it like things that you've learned in vet tech school? So um like how is it? Yeah. I'm so, I'm still kind of confused. Yeah. Sorry so for the dumb question. That's okay. <laughs> so uh, to become a technician, it's mm-hmm. a three year career program okay. done at the CJEP level. CJEP in the college. Um, yeah. the college level. Um and we study you know, all that. We study um, husbandry. So, you know, how to properly take care of animals and what their specific requirements are depending on the species. Oh so that's Lord. it. That's a thing too, right? That's you guys study one species. We right. study multiple, a lot more. A, a lo- <laughs> a <laughs> it's lot. like expecting that you will encounter at some point like a parrot. Yep. yep. Oh my God. Yeah. I feel like... <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. As <laughs> yeah. So we, we, I think that's another thing um, that sometimes maybe human medicine forgets in mm-hmm. comparing to what we do is we, we know a lot of different species uh, from farm animals to companion animals, which are dogs and cats, right. um, to small mammals, um, rabbits are a whole other thing, right. um, birds, exotics, reptiles. I did um, a an internship. An internship. I yes. did an internship um, with uh, at an aquarium. So I <gasps> I worked with uh, wow. marine mammals. Sorry, I'm just super like yeah. amazed with all So these all are of this. like there's like so right. many different opportunities for us when we talk about species. Mm-hmm. Uh, so <laughs> that's really fun. <laughs> yeah. Because listen, I have been always fascinated, and like you, I've loved animals. Mm-hmm. I've had animals since I was like s- small and growing mm-hmm. up. I would watch Nat Geo, <laughs> David Attenborough's like Ooh. Netflix shows. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I guess I've had an interest in, with animals, but never really into the medicine of mm-hmm. it. But it's just so nice hearing it from someone who went through it because. Yeah. There's a lot of things yeah. that people probably don't know. Like yeah. for me, for an outsider, it's mm-hmm. fascinating. And at the same time, like, oh my God, praise you guys for yeah. going through all of this hardship <laughs> and becoming something yeah. that you you guys love. Mm-hmm. So I think like the reason why I probably only work with two species is because mm-hmm. like whose brain can hold all that information. Right. Just exactly like in nursing, <laughs> right? Thank you for clarifying that because, you know... I think some people and I guess patients and clients, parents doesn't understand is that we're human beings too who can make mistakes, who doesn't have a whole library of information in our head and we can Mm -hmm. only hold as much in our head. But that doesn't mean we're not competent and we're not professional. When my doctor Mm -hmm. looks something up, I always say, thank God that she does not have the ego to pretend Thank like you. she knows something when she doesn't amazing, amazing. so that I get better treatment. Thank I much you. appreciate my doctor looking something up to be sure than treating me incorrectly. Thank so you. So let's just all clarify that nobody's brain Thank can you. maintain Thank so much information and your doctor does need to look things up. That's it. And we need to look things up too. I, that's it. That's why like <laughs> now I'm teaching as yeah. a, a nursing professor. That's why I tell my I students, I was like, Hey, you guys, if you don't know the answer, Google it. Yeah. I was like, <clears throat> you have, I, I do this as a nurse. Mm-hmm. And I think I feel more safer for someone who's actually trying to research and to like, you yeah. know, evidence base, find the yeah. right thing mm-hmm. to do or say instead of like guessing it on their, you know, head yeah. and saying something that's completely stupid. Yeah. You want to be secure in your decision making, especially right. when it comes to the well-being of your patients. Right. And because I've seen this TikTok too of like a guy and he was taking a video of the doctor who's going to do the surgery in his oh, foot yes. or something. <laughs> and he's like, look at my doctor. He was wrapping. He was it was like to wrap a sprained ankle or something. Something and like he that. he was looking up how to wrap it. Exactly. And he's like, my doctor is like YouTubing yeah. how to do this. I was like, yes. Yeah. And I will feel more comfortable mm-hmm. having that doctor. Yeah. 
than another doctor who's saying, yeah, I've been doing this for a while and I know what to do. Yeah. I've done it like twice. Someone showed me. I can definitely do it. Exactly. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'd rather you have that book open right next to me and I help you through this. <laughs> Thank you. And there's there's nothing bad about your patient knowing a bit more information. Just like when doctors say like, you know your body mm-hmm. better than anyone. These owners know their animal better than anybody. So when we are talking to them and we're going through a treatment plan, let's right. say, and they say, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be able to do X, Y, Z. And I am go, you know what? That's okay. You know what you are and are not able to do with your dog, cat, et cetera. Right. It's a collaborative approach, approach in that at, the, know, end the, at the end of the day, it's not just this is gold standard. This is what will, what needs to be done for this patient. Well, you know, these clients, these owners, these parents. I love the parents. <laughs> the parents. It looks much better on paper than I know. <laughs> <laughs> saying it out loud. Um, you know, we need to know what they're capable of. Right. And what they're willing to um, expend energy on as well. Like it's stressful to administer medication to an animal that, is resistant i could never i could never give my dog anything yeah. and i don't know how the vet techs do it yeah but they do it in like two seconds i was like it took me 40 <laughs> bites <laughs> yeah 40 bites and 30 scratch for yeah. me to give this small little thing and you guys it took you two seconds yeah i'm like flabbergasted of how similar <laughs> it is now i understand all the vet techs mm. who's been messaging me every single time like yeah. john you don't understand how much i relate to this yeah i'm not taking care of humans i'm taking care of animals but mm-hmm. this is exactly the same same thing that we're yeah. going through i yeah. just find animals so cute because i have two dogs of oh, mine. Do you? Okay. yes i have a mini poodle mm-hmm. he's actually like probably eight pounds mm-hmm. but he's a little thicker now because he eats a lot and then the other one is this little small Australian shepherd. You have a mini a mini shepherd? Mini shepherd. Yeah. And I thought that he's cuz when I got him, mm. uh, got her, the mini shepherd, they told me that she's going to be like a medium-sized shepherd because Australian shepherd are usually like bigger or like yeah. medium. Yeah. She is as small as a chihuahua. Oh my god. I know there's someone something Someone lied to you. Someone lied to me, you guys. <laughs> And I have some few questions actually yeah. about that. Go ahead. For people who want to adopt animals, I'm just asking you for your opinions. Where do you think they should get their animals? So this is a great question. Um, and I think a lot of people want to know this answer. For sure. So people sometimes are really against breeders. Mm-hmm. But I am in, of the opinion that if you have a breeder who is recognized... Right. Does their research, does the genetic testing, these are the healthiest dogs you're going to get. Right. Fact. Now, that being said, Mm -hmm. I think adoption is from a reputable place Mm -hmm. is also amazing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had a pug shih tzu mix, Mm -hmm. which is like, who did that? That was horrible. She oh. was the cutest, ugliest thing on the whole entire planet. Two eyes looking opposite directions, snorted like a pig. Wait, a Shih Tzu and a pug? And a Shih Tzu and a pug oh mixed. Oh my God. Like why? This, but right. we loved her, you know? Yeah. We adopted her. So this goes back to yeah. breeder versus adoption. Right. So I think adoption is always a great option because a lot of these, like the SPCA, are overfilled with animals. Mm-hmm. And so... I think it's great if you can rescue. Rescue some of the animals. Yeah. But um, I think my only concern, because a lot of my best friends from nursing school mm-hmm. adopted yeah. dogs. And I think it was a struggle for them in the first two or yeah. three years because mm-hmm. a lot of those dogs or a lot of those animals have traumatic yes. experiences. Absolutely. And I remember one of my best friends, she adopted the pit bull mm. because they were supposed to put him yeah. down because no one wants to take care of him. And you know how like the pit bull is? For some reason here in Montreal, they're illegal. So... Can you just clarify that? Yeah. So I don't think... I, um, I'm not like up to date. But right. I'm pretty sure this law was removed. This breed specific law. Hopefully. I think so. Hopefully. Hopefully. Because breed specific laws are complete garbage in my opinion. Right. My opinion. Mm-hmm. Um. 
Because it's not the breed that's the problem. It's the porins. You cannot blame a dog, how it was raised and how it acts yeah. because it all depends on the parents. Yeah, exactly. Like my dog who 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 grabs food <laughs> yeah. is because of me who gives him food. I appreciate you admitting that because a lot of people <laughs> will not admit that the reason that their dog is behaving the way they do is because they give in. No. I so I would I absolutely you. be honest, besties. <laughs> I give my dog some little meat in there, some little <laughs> veggies in there, because he always stands there next to me and he's just like, How can you ignore that face? <laughs> the puppy. I was like, Okay, fine, here. Yeah. And the next thing I know, he developed this habit of like always trying and finding a way to get food. And then he ate a popsicle stick. There you go. And that's my fault. That's not his <laughs> fault. He developed the habits because of me. Yeah. And a lot of other people try to deny that it's the dog. It's mm -hmm. the breed. It's not mm -hmm. the breed. It's you, baby. But uh, yeah, definitely adopting a dog, you need to be very conscious. And just in general in life, mm -hmm. if you're going to make something like a big decision, you got to <laughs> think about it. Think about it. Not just moment. like... Mm, I think I want to adopt a dog today because it's yeah. cute. Like when I see sometimes first time dog owners and they've <laughs> adopted a giant shepherd mix. Oh, Lordy. I'm like, honey, can you have started <laughs> with like a beginner breed? Like a chihuahua or something? Uh, even then, I'm like, <laughs> right. This right. is a choice. Right. It's a hobby. It's, it's a hobby. If you get an animal mm -hmm. and it is a breed, any breed, to be honest, you that's a hobby. It's not a stuffed animal. It's not. It's literally having a kid. Uh, yes. And I think for people who's wanting a kid in the future type of thing, mm -hmm. have a pet first mm. and then have a kid after. Oh, my God. I'd rather have the kid first than a pet after. Oh, really? Because I, I think, like this because it's just the opposite. Yeah, because I think a lot of people think that. That like, oh, you know what? I want to see how I'll be as a parent. Let me get an animal. Mm. But like, you have to think about whether or not you want to be a parent either way. Because that's a decision that right. you are making that's going to impact that individual. Child, animal, etc. I see that a lot of times where people get animals and then they're like, oh my God, this is not for me. But right. they make excellent human parents. I love that. Yeah. I love that perspective because in my head, I always had this thing that, you know, start with a pet mm -hmm. because a pet is a lot of obligation. You have, you have to teach it how to sit, how mm -hmm. to do this. You have to do all of this obligation just yeah. like having a child mm -hmm. and then it kind of prepares you in being a parent yeah but i completely understand your point like i think people sometimes are classified in two different ways the way right. they parent a person mm -hmm. and the way they parent a pet i right. think a lot of millennials come in and they're mm -hmm. like this animal is my child do not tell me otherwise. <laughs> this is part of my family. I'm going to do whatever it is. Girl, I'm a millennial. Uh, I'm sure you're in there. You're like <laughs> weeping. You're one of those. I'm hugging you in the consultation room because I need to like calm you down. Oh my God. And then yeah. there's, you know, people that don't understand the responsibility of owning a pet. They don't do any research. They mm -hmm. buy something off of the internet. Oh Lord. Don't even get me started on Kijiji. Oh my God, KGG is like Craigslist. Yeah, it's do not get it on Craigslist. No. Yeah. Again, like it's. I feel bad more for the animals. Oh yeah. At the end of the day, you know? like they have no understanding or they just want to be loved. Yeah. They just want. They just want to be cuddled. They just want to be part of a family. That's it. Yeah. Oh my God. I used to live in the Philippines mm -hmm. where we have stray dogs. Yes. Because in the Philippines, we have stray dogs yeah. and that's very, very common. common. Yeah. And I just feel bad. So what I used to do is I would actually take those doggies and I will keep them. I will feed them. <laughs> yeah. Because I was like, you know, I feel bad for this well, some little of those, baby. Some of those stray dogs in some of these countries around the world, because strays are so common, they are better fed Oh my then some God. of <laughs> they don't have sickness they don't have nothing they don't have to go to emergency you're hospital like, you're like how is this stray dog fat just just like <laughs> right anyways i want to move on mm -hmm. to yes. the question that people 
from the internet ask yes. me to yes, ask yes. you. Yes, let's do so it. So I will put you in a hot seat let's do with it. all this question. I know you guys asked some of the juiciest question to her. I hope <laughs> that she's going to be able to answer this because some of these are just like, oh my God, I would not answer this myself. So let's see. <laughs> Have you ever encountered a terrible porrent? I think terrible is... Not the best word. Well... Well, suitable for most cases. Right. But I think there's degrees of terribleness. Right. So have I seen like people come in with quote unquote neglected animals? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do I have people Mm -hmm. who just never knew they love that animal, but they just never had. They just don't know. They just never had that information. And I have the empathy to be like, well, let me educate you. This is why we don't do this. This is why we do do this. And then at the end of the day, these people walk out of their better owners for this animal. Good. Have I had people that come in who think that they are like God on earth, Mm -hmm. thinking that everything that they know is right? Ma'am, why are you coming in and asking me for information if you're not going to listen to me? (laughs) That's that's just exactly in nurse. Yeah, N- nurses. Do you hear this? This is our patients. Like, <laughs> why would you come to my care just to tell me what I should do when I feel them becoming defensive? Right. Based off of information I'm giving them, mm-hmm. mostly about food. Right. I say, hey, I went to school. I studied. I do continuing education. I'm staying up to date. The information I'm giving you Mm -hmm. is for your knowledge. What you do with that knowledge after, that's your choice. Thank you. Thank you. So like, don't get mad at me Mm -hmm. for telling you something. Right. I'm here to inform you, to educate you. Right. If you get mad at that, that's your problem. At the end of the day, Mm -hmm. you're the one who's going to come back to the hospital (laughs) if you don't do this right things. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's frustrating. It is frustrating. Because there's days where you're like, whatever, I'm here to do my job. I gave Mm -hmm. you the information. And then you go back and you just continue working. Then there's other days where you're like, I cannot (laughs) with these people anymore. Right. Right, right, right. You know, we got to stay professional. And it's it's sad because Mm -hmm. at the same time, we have to always be the bigger person. Yes. Like, why, if they're disrespecting me, Mm -hmm. why can I do the same? Yeah. And I'm sure you have the colleague where, let's say you have a difficult patient. We have difficult owners that you're like, one second, let me go get my colleague for you. And then you send in that that person Mm -hmm. and they get they go in there and they go. Not today, honey. Not with me. And you're like, <laughs> and you just go to them and be like, I can't today. I can't do this. Can you go and talk to this person for me? And oh they're like, God. they're like, not in my house. <laughs> Let me go in there and tell them how it is. Love it. Next. What is something you want the general public to know about veterinary technician that they will never know? We do everything. You just heard it in the very, very beginning. They do everything. And nurses, guys, we thought we're suffering. They're also suffering. And we get bit. But I'm sure you get bit. We get bit too. The, I, I think I would be I would be better bit by an animal than a human. Oh, you say that. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm not sure. Girl, I don't know if you've seen. Oh, we get punched maybe in the chest. And bit and then strangle. Get headbutt by a German shepherd and then tell me how you feel. <laughs> a German... Sh- oh, my... <laughs> d- have you ever been, like, physically, like, you know... In an altercation with an animal? Yeah. Every single day of oh my, my life. Oh, my God. What was the worst altercation you've ever had? Um. So, the worst altercation, I think, I had was with a German shepherd, which they, they'd get a bad rap mm. because they are large and they are mean so i think um well at my clinic i am referred to as the dog whisperer Aww, so if they're that's cute mm, <laughs> it's let's get not it. really let's, let's break that down let's break that down so there's an aggressive dog in the clinic right cannot be cannot put a muzzle on it cannot give it a sedation cannot give it an injection they're like hey nadia can you <laughs> go deal with that for me and i'm like <sighs> You're that nurse. I'm like, bring it on. 
10 days ago, I got bit by a cat. And I know that it's 10 days because I just finished my antibiotics. Oh, my God. I got bit in the thumb. Oh. Through my nail bed, through the other side. <gasps> and my thumb ended up like quadruple oh. the size. Oh. And I ended up going to the doctor and, you know, bless their soul. They saw me right away. Love my doctor. And she was so concerned. Mm. And I was like, this is like a usual a thing. A usual thing. Like there's nothing it traumatizing. Just, it to just this. happened to get infected this time. Oh my god. Because I think I'm bit scratched daily. Nurses, y'all hear this. <laughs> Does it ring a motherfucking bell? Yeah. Because this sounds so similar to uh, uh yeah. that's so funny. When we have to go in, uh if there's like an aggressive cat and we go in and the doctor's like, bring everything. <laughs> and that means you bring the thick towel you bring the gloves yeah you bring the muzzle and it's like go time <laughs> that's literally <laughs> the same same scenario in the hospital yeah. is that it's mr smith again everyone prepare <laughs> you know <laughs> you got four people coming in yeah. security is there police oh my like, god everyone yeah. It's right here, guys. We got this. Yeah. We got five minutes <laughs> to get him settled before he punches every single one of yeah. us. Oh, that's really funny. Next. How hard is it to keep both pet and pet owner happy during tough times? Uh, that's difficult. Very difficult. Because sometimes what is best for the patient is not feasible for the owners. Right. So there's definitely a balancing act of making sure that the animals getting the best care that the owner can they deserve. and that they deserve and that the owner is able to give. But at the end of the day, the owners still have the last words, exactly. right? Yeah. That's really, really painful. It can be difficult because sometimes what's best for the patient is not possible at all. Right. Um, and that can be hard to handle digest right but they have like false hopes of like things and yeah. i completely understand too because yeah. again it's the same thing in medicine mm -hmm. you know when family members fight about like the patient yeah. when we're like the patient just wants to rest and you guys are fighting over money and yeah. these things and keeping mm -hmm. you know this is not suitable it's not like physically yeah good for this patient mm -hmm. but it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's and there's like, only so much you can do at the end of the day. Right. It's a yeah. dilemma, really. And, mm -hmm. you know, us going through it, it's so hard because we just take all of this trauma and... Take it home with us. <laughs> right? And act like, oh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's going to go away, but it's stuck in us. It's like marked. Yeah. It's like part of us now. Yeah. That's crazy. Next. <laughs> you guys are asking... <laughs> The funniest question. What is the dumbest thing a poet has ever told you? My favorite. And mm -hmm. I think um, I've heard it once and I'm going to hear it again. I found a tick on my dog. Okay. No problem. Come in. Search the dog. There's no tick. You go to the owner. Tell me exactly where this tick is. Okay. And then you're like, ma'am, that's a nipple. <laughs> <laughs> i swear that's so funny because <laughs> and you have to tell them they get so embarrassed and i'm like don't worry imagine they were trying to pick it uh i'm sure they were and the thing too mm. is they get so embarrassed and i'm like it's okay you're not the first and you will not be the last person to come in here and be like oh my god it's a tick and i'm like they have it's multiple a, nipples. It's a tick nipple. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> it is permanent. Please do not try and remove your animal's nipples. Oh, that's so <laughs> That is the funny. Uh, you know what? That's the funniest thing ever. Next. What type of situation gets you to think, oh, no, not again? Um, When there are particular patients mm -hmm. that are aggressive. Right. And you see them on the schedule and you're like, I can't do this today. Why today? Why is Max Rocky, whatever their name is, on the schedule? At least it's like a cute little name, you know? Like <laughs> like Poppy. Poppy oh is gosh. here. For me, it's like, oh my God, guys. It's Mr. Smith again. He is back. He is back and 
Yeah. <laughs> it's another week or two. Yeah. That is funny. Mm-hmm. And then the owners are like, I'm so sorry. And we're like, Aww. you know what? We have learned to handle. We got them, used to it. And now it's just an everyday for us. It's fine. <laughs> it's a normal it's thing. It's a normal that thing. Occurs. Yeah. <laughs> Next. What is the best part of your job? And do the good moments outweigh the bad ones? Absolutely. Absolutely. So there are days that are so difficult. You're crying. You go mm-hmm. home. It's horrible. And then the next day you're like, this is why I do what I do. Because at the end of the day, I'm there for my patients. And the wins definitely outweigh the losses. Right. Is there anything particular that will forever mm-hmm. be stuck in your head? Like that mm-hmm. one very specific patient that you've been with and struggle with. Mm-hmm. And then it was a win. Um, I think I have a few of those Mm -hmm. where when you work really hard with a patient and you're able to build a bond with the owner. Right. And then you establish that trust in that relationship. Mm -hmm. Those moments of when that bond is made between like the three of us. That's like the best feeling ever. Right. Is like having an owner that's so motivated and trusts you so much, then you're able to give the best care possible for that patient. That will outweigh any difficulties, uh, difficulties. and challenges. Yeah. When we get like a first time uh, like puppy kitten consult mm-hmm. and you go in there and you're explaining all this stuff and they go, yeah, tell me more. That's really tell cute. Tell me more. And then you eg- exit that consultation room and you go to the veterinarian and you go, these people are going to be incredible owners. For professionals like us who really do struggle almost every single day, yeah. to have someone like a patient or a family member or just a whole situation that's smooth sales because it makes our day lighter a little bit yeah. because our days could vary, right? Yeah. It could be super heavy. It could be super, mm-hmm. I mean, it. it's never like, quiet there's no never say that word exactly (laughs) oh yes no you you don't say that it's quiet you don't say that that's a beautiful vein do not comment on that vein that is so funny like are you trying to jinx me don't tell me how like don't say it (laughs) do you guys have any full moon situation with a pets for us we hate full moons oh yeah when full moons hit things just get crazy (laughs) So we have times of the year. Oh. The holidays, which I'm sure... Particularly. For y- yeah, for you too, I'm sure. Any holiday that's particularly chocolate-based. So a Valentine's Day, um, oh my uh, Lord. Easter, right. uh, Halloween. Mm-hmm. We're like, hide your candy, hide your chocolate. Do not let that right. animal close to it. So my question to you, since you're talking mm-hmm. about chocolate, is like, how bad mm-hmm. is it really... For dogs, so the it chocolate. Depend, it depends on the kind of chocolate. I think that's one of the questions too yeah. uh, about intoxication. So um, there are quite a few toxics, uh, toxins that animals can get into. So chocolate, coffee um, are toxic. But onions? Onions, garlic. There's a list. Is apple grapes. a bad thing? No, apple's great. Not, oh, really? But not grapes. Okay, grapes. Yeah, yeah I've heard grapes. Mm-hmm. Um, and... When it comes to chocolate, obviously dark chocolate's the worst. But in any situation that your dog has eaten chocolate and you are unsure, regardless, call your vet. Right. Just just to be safe. Yeah. Just to be safe. Because it's going to depend on the size of your mm-hmm. animal. It's going to be dependent on the kind of chocolate. So either way, call your vet. <laughs> I love your energy, girl. You should work with us. Just be part with us. Next. Next. What is the most frequent non-edible consumed by pets? Yeah, socks. Uh, socks, tampons. Tampons is the worst because it, it expands, right? Yeah, so both are really bad. Any uh, in cats, elastic bands. Okay. What? How do you get rid of that? So, surgery. Do you guys ask the cutest but funniest and dumbest question? Do you get tired of people denying their animal are fat as fuck? Absolutely. <laughs> but. I have to say, I will not apologize for telling you that your animal is fat. I will tell you straight up. They'll be like, oh, no, it's just a little fluffy, just a little round. And I'm like, ma'am, no, that is fat. That's overweight. That is obese. 
Yeah. That's like, oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, that's why that's, is it so round? That's not healthy. Yeah. And I think the thing with cats and dogs, at least, is that that extra two pounds right. is a huge impact on their welfare. So mm-hmm. on their joints, on their um, their organs, et cetera. Right. Like you might think like, oh, they're just like one or two pounds overweight. Yeah. But for them, that's excessive. That's too much. Um, when we start to see like the 20 pound cats. Oh, my God. It's like, sorry, your cat should be seven pounds. Right. Right. Like, and that's most cats. And it's like you didn't know, but now, you know. Perfect. And so now we're going to deal with it. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Next question. How often do owners stay when their pets is being put down? Okay, I hate this question because I could never see my dog mm. being put down because he lived, he is a Shih Tzu mm-hmm. and he lived for 13 years, mm. but I had to leave him in the Philippines because I got him in the Philippines. Mm. And... Three years ago, my grandma had to call me and she was crying so much. I was like, what happened? She's like, your dog, he's passing away. And they had to FaceTime me. Yeah. And he took his last breath on FaceTime and that Uh, was so traumatic to me. Yeah, I can imagine. I could never, ever, Mm -hmm. not even in human. I would never participate in like, you know, those kind of Mm -hmm. situation because I can't imagine Mm. animals. I could never. So I think that I I don't know if I have a unique opinion on this, Mm -hmm. but um, first answer the question, most people stay till the end. Um, Some people can't handle it and I don't judge them for that. For me, euthanasia is probably the most important part of my job. Um, I take it very seriously right? Um, because for me, it's like the last really important thing we can do for them to limit their suffering um and so i'm very pro euthanasia um for end of life i find it very hard when people are against euthanasia for their pets because i i can't to watch a dog suffer right or a cat suffer is heartbreaking and if i can do something to help them pass easier with less suffering of course why would i not right want to do that again to get euthanasia though in human just Mm -hmm. i need to clarify well i don't know how it works so i would love to know Mm -hmm. well for human there's a bunch of stuff that you Mm -hmm. have to be qualified for Uh, to even be allowed to get made we'll call Mm it made Mm -hmm. just because it's i mean i guess for human it's more sensitive to call Mm -hmm. it euthanasia but basically it's euthanasia in human yeah but it's medical aid in dying yeah i don't know correct me if i'm wrong to any medical professional Mm -hmm. who's hearing this if euthanasia and made is the same thing but that's my understanding for now but then it's it's a choice yeah and like you said sometimes there are Mm situations that you wish you could just help yeah that person or that animal from suffering yeah and you can't Exactly. Mm-hmm. So when my my no no my grandfather passed away, he was almost he was like ninety six almost, right. and that last year of life, I wish that I could take that suffering away from him. Right, like that last year of life was nothing. That was wasted. That was pain. Um, and so when I think of animals in that sense, in that we don't have to jump all these hoops. Because I guess there's less uh, quote unquote ethics. Mm -hmm. Euthanasia is one of the most, I think, important parts of veterinary medicine. And we try and make it the most peaceful experience for both the patient and for Mm -hmm. the owners. Mm -hmm. Um, And we give people so much time. What people need to understand at the end of the day is that is it really worthy for our animals Mm -hmm. or the people we love to suffer just for them to be with us at this very moment. Yeah. And again, I am not judging on people's mm-hmm. opinion and decision. Yeah. But this is something you have to consider. And this mm-hmm. is something we tell patients. We've recently lost like some patients at work who have been with us for a really long time. Mm. And 
you know, they were like our three old men that would come in and mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, one of them had like a wheelchair oh, and like, no. yeah. So like we were, you know, we've been through it with these patients and when we lost them, the whole clinic was mourning. So, oh, for so sure. don't, don't think that when, you know, the veterinary team is euthanizing your pet that they don't, they're enjoying and they're having a party at the yeah. back of the, <laughs> um, like we're with you. We're crying. Mm-hmm. We, cr- we cry behind the scenes clients, uh, owners that ask like, Oh, you know, you must, how often do you do these? Right. When I'm when we're doing a euthanasia, right. I was like multiple times a week. That's crazy. Um, and so there is a little bit of desensitization mm-hmm. to it in that you know we do have to uh, desensitize ourselves so that you know we can continue right. working afterwards. Right, setting that professional boundaries yeah. at some point, and that again, that doesn't mean that you guys are like cold <laughs> cold or not emotionally yeah. attached to mm-hmm. this whole situation it's just yeah. that you've seen it enough that at some point you're just numb yeah that's it we yeah. all have our own different point of views yeah. opinion and that should always be respected yeah exactly mm-hmm. so that's like a that's a big one uh that's euthanasia. that's yeah. really big your profession <laughs> should also get that you know praise mm-hmm. for you know, doing the job and being there to support us from like some parts of our lives yeah. that, that are essential too for us to thrive and continue doing our job. Yeah, because our pets are so important. Oh yeah, absolutely. Listen, like I will do anything for my pets. Mm-hmm. Like my dogs are my freaking life. Like they yeah. piss me off so much <laughs> many times. But whenever I'm like super anxious, depressed, angry or anything, seeing my two dogs yeah. and you know, having this beautiful angels in my life, I <laughs> don't know what I'm going to do. I think that the actual definition of unconditional love is between people and their pets. Oh, absolutely. And I completely agree with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, I don't want to talk about that anymore because it's making me sad. But it's something that we have to talk about. Yeah. But, oh, my God, girl. Like, we could talk here forever. There's mm-hmm. so much to talk about. I know. And thank you for educating me. Yeah, you're and welcome. And educating all our besties. Yeah. Who's listening right now about veterinary mm-hmm. technician? I would never, never understand or even know how similar your job, your profession is mm-hmm. to the human medicine world and completely, completely <laughs> in nursing, mm-hmm. in teaching. <sighs> wow. Yeah. The emotional uh, burden that we all carry, I think, <sighs> is a universal experience. It is. Yeah. It is. And we always have it harder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> and the pay is it's just not there. Not it's not it. there. You know, like so people who say that the veterinary industry are in it for the money and we don't care about your pets. Oof. It's not true. <laughs> you should see my bank account. Yeah. And <laughs> the thing that you have to go through getting bitten, getting scratched, yeah. all of this stuff. Yeah. I don't think you would want to do that for just because it's fun. Yeah, that's y- it. You do it because you, you have care. a passion yeah. and you care and love yeah. this job. Yeah. And that's it. People got to understand that. Ooh, well, girl, that's <laughs> a lot, you guys. That's a lot to take in. And I feel like I just grew as an individual. And I feel like <laughs> veterinary technician is something I would do if nursing is still not working. Because it's still not working. <laughs> or if, you know, human keeps pissing me off, I'm just going to switch in like animals. Let's see how, how different it is. Maybe they have a Mr. Smith too. In the veterinary world. I'm, I'm oh, pretty sure. Oh, uh, we do. I don't know if switching is any better. <laughs> <laughs> Just like stay. Stay where you are. It's the same, same, same thing. Same, same. Oh, my God. Well, before we end this, I mm-hmm. want you to give a message out there to our besties and for yeah. the future veterinary technician who wants to do this job. And for those who's listening, who's already in the profession, what would you like to tell them? I have to say, keep going. School is hard no matter what, but it is worth it. And, you know, stay curious, stay motivated. And even though it is not the most paid profession, it is the most fulfilling And Mm. I think the fact that it's so fulfilling is what keeps us going through it. And just remember that the support is there. So 
don't be hating on your coworkers. You know, the best support you're going to get is from your fellow technicians and from your veterinarians. And so we really need to work as a team. And you got to remember that we have each other. And so you need to maintain those relationships. I love that. I love that. I love that because that's so important. And for people who tell technicians, oh, are you doing this in the meantime before you become a veterinarian? No, (laughs) this is my career beautiful yes yes and i am proud to be a technician say it louder for the people in the back (laughs) good i love it oh my god i love her so much like i feel like i can talk to her like every like i feel like we can make like 20 episodes together Uh, whenever you want (laughs) this was such a great experience thank you so much and it's her first time to you guys Uh, so if you're listening to i was like um girl you are a natural (laughs) what are you saying this is your first time i was like it's it's like talking to someone who has a podcast already oh my gosh what a compliment you're making me blush well thank you thank you guys so much for listening to this episode and i hope you guys have learned a lot from nadia and to the vet tech world and to the animal world and i'm so happy bestie because another therapy session for our vet techs and for our nurses because i think we all just relate at the end of the day and again bestie before you finish this episode, do me a quick favor and make sure that you download this episode and all the other episodes that you haven't listened to and make sure that you follow us and turn on notification on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and make sure that you leave us a five-star review. I love you guys so much. Don't forget, you got to stay caffeinated, medicated, <laughs> and hi- try to hydrate. Doesn't matter how you hydrate. It can be coffee. It can be energy drinks. It can be water, which is good for you. But Bessie, do what you got to do. And remember, always remember that you are where you are in life because you work hard for it. You deserve it. And you should be proud of it. Thank you guys again so much. And we will see you again next week. Bye. Thank you, Nadia. Oh, that uh, was good. That was good. Oh my god. Uh, that I, was fun. That was fun. <laughs>